And today we are talking with the art and design department. Um, so once again, if you haven't been through one of these before, we'll just be having a little Q&A and talking about things that we find interesting. Um, if you have a question, please type it into the comments below and we will do our best to answer that question live on air. Um, we've got two students and two faculty members here today, so we should be able to address any questions art and design related that you can throw at us. Um, first of all, just want to introduce our guests today. We've got Anthony Carton, who's an assistant professor of art and design. Anthony, if you want to introduce yourself a little. Oh yeah, I'm Anthony Carton. I've, this is my first year teaching here, and um, I'm really happy to be here. Great. So. Cool. And what's your specialty in, oh, in so teaching? I, I teach uh, graphic design or uh, communication design and um, interactive uh, uh, design. Awesome. Oh, well, we've also got Gretchen Potts, who's a senior communication design major. Okay. What do you have to say for yourself? Um, well, I. This is my third degree, actually. Oh, that's exciting. And um, I, I got a master's degree in um, human nutrition. And uh, in my research, I spent a lot of time looking under microscopes and taking pictures. And I realized that I was way more interested in the images that I was creating rather than the data. That's fascinating. And so here I am in communication design school. Cool. Yeah. That's an awesome story. We've also got George Bangs, who's also a senior in communication design. Hello, yes, I'm George Bangs. I'm from Boulder, Colorado, and I've been a, a communication design student here for the last four years, um, getting involved in all the club organizations and trying to do my best. <laughs> yeah. And George, I actually, I don't know if I've told you this before, but when you were a freshman, one of my interns came up to me and was like, there's this new freshman on campus named George and his Instagram is crazy and we need to start reposting his pictures. Just because, wow. just the eye wow. that you had, she could tell right away was something that we wanted to, to get out there. So, yeah. And then we've also got uh, Susan Moss, who's a professor of art and design and has been here for 27 years. Just That's me. just what I was going to say. <laughs> I stole your words. I, I, and I've been here in a lot of different roles, uh, and my focus right now is teaching in art and design, which is a wonderful place to do, a great thing to be able to do. Yeah. Well, thanks so much to all of you for being here today. So let's just get started by talking about the two majors available. Um, we've got studio art and communication design. Mm -hmm. and. Susan, could you talk about what studio art is all so about? So studio art is probably the more traditional major. Uh, students who are interested in drawing, painting, ceramics, sculpture, uh, and using those thing, all those things together, sort of interdisciplinary approaches, are studio art majors. Um, and they, they take some beginning foundations courses that are thought to be sort of relevant and important for um, all art majors. And then they have the opportunity to really branch out and uh, kind of uh, try out a lot of different things, uh, possibly find a focus. Um, so it's a, a pretty interesting um, group of students and uh, a lot of different opportunities for them. Cool. And then, Tony, your specialty is more on the communication design. Tell us what that major is. Yeah, about. sure. So, uh, a student studying communication design is, you know, really studying to shape the future graphic objects of the world. And so, whether those cool. be on paper or on a computer screen or on a mo mobile device or the side of a pickup truck or a van or a bus, uh, you know, graphic or uh, communication designers shape shape those graphic things in our lives every day. Every or organization uh, has a you know, visual uh, face to it. Anytime that you've seen a you know, logo, packaging, words on you know, t-shirts, things on cars, uh, that's all graphic design. So we see graphic and um, communication design objects every day, all day long. Yeah, such cool stuff. Yeah. Um, so what kinds of classes are involved in, in that type of major? Sure, so in a communication design major, students are going to start out with a foundations year that is uh, combined with the studio art students. Uh, that has to do with the history of graphic design and communication design. It has to do with the history of uh, studio art over the last hundred years. Uh, and so they you know, start out learning things like you know, balance, color theory, other things like that. Uh, and then we then move through various levels of developing like an awareness of type and image, mm -hmm. creating some uh, depth in specific topic areas, and then finally, you know, mastering some, some of those things during the senior year. 
So um, you're talking about those foundation classes or the introduction classes that every R major takes? Is exactly. That, so, exactly. That's there's, so there's some between overlap the between the two majors. So it's drawing, uh, 2D design, 3D design, introduction to digital media. So, cool. um, so even it's the a, studio art majors are taking that as well. Exactly. And then beyond. You know, where, when they have some choices, there's still a lot of uh, communication design students in studio art courses and vice versa. Cool. Yeah, so it's not, it's distinct in terms of the diploma you get, but in terms of our day-to-day -day lives, um, it's pretty mixed. I mean, a lot, we're, of yeah, a, lot, a lot of crossover. Cool. And are there minors available in the art department? There, there, are. there are, yeah. So you can minor in studio art and in communication design, and you can also minor in, in art, art history. history, right? Uh -huh. so, exactly. Yeah. Cool. And so if a high school student was interested in art, what and maybe wanted to you know, study here, what would be some things that they could do in high school that would help them get in the direction? I'd love to hear from you guys yeah. too. So I started off, uh, like my interest in communication design and graphic design was sparked with a, uh, an elective course that was offered in my high school for digital media. So it was almost like, um, kind of like our digital media course here. I got familiar with Photoshop and Illustrator and the whole mm -hmm. Adobe suite. Um, it was encouraged to like combine photography and illustration that you would do by hand. So um, if your high school has a program like that, I would recommend getting involved because it definitely uh, helps you get the ball rolling when you get to college and you feel a lot more confident going into those classes. Yeah. Um, and then like Susan and Tony were saying, uh, there is like a lot of overlap in the foundations and beyond. So if you already enjoy um, like traditional art media or graphic design media, like you won't have to give up one or the other, whichever major you choose when you come here. That's cool. See, it's possible that equally important though is just this breadth of experience you can have in high school. So if you like history, you know, mm -hmm. history courses or literature or whatever, because art students need a context and they need something to make art about. So being connected and informed to the larger world, if they care about uh, politics, social issues, the environment, comes into play yeah. in both studio and communication design. Cool. Yeah, I would agree with that and, and just say that, you know, um, uh, com communication designers need to be in touch with the people that are going to be using all the mm -hmm. things that they're making. So they, so they need that similar context that Susan's talking about. Uh, and you know, really, when I think of like, what do you need to have from high school when you come to college for art or communication design? I just, you know, be curious and want to, you know, design the things of the future. This is where on campus we shape the future. You know, hmm. we are proposing future objects. And if you have never taken a drawing class, if you've never, you know, thought that you were creative or art, art, artistic. You know, earlier we were talking about drawing being a totally teachable thing. Mm -hmm. Creativity is teachable. We have a definition of that and we can show you how to, you know, do it. Uh, so, you know, in the event that someone didn't have those opportunities, you know, uh, like they weren't able to take like a, you know, graphics arts mm -hmm. class or they weren't able to learn a little bit of Photoshop or something in high school, Come here. I just assumed that you've never done anything, and, <laughs> but that you're curious and you're excited, and that I want to do it with you. Cool. So we're gonna we're gonna do some art, and we're gonna do some uh, design together, whether you've done it or not. If you you know, just as long as you want to be doing it, that's all that I think that, that you need. Yeah. That's awesome. So there's no audition process or anything like that to get into this. There's there isn't really there isn't really, and and uh, so I'd go along with Tony. We I. Uh, I always want to tell students and parents that it's not just talent, you know, mm -hmm. that it, what we have to offer is open to anyone. I mean, we, we know that human beings are creative people, and uh, we think what we do is teachable and learnable, and we, I think, you know, for young people just to be curious and open themselves to that, but also understand that uh, there, there's an important link between effort an outcome. So there's nothing magic that happens. Yeah. I mean, you don't there's just a lust with the fairy Yeah, so if you don't that. think you have the talent, uh, you can learn, and effort is really important. I'm yeah. a good example of that because <laughs> we were talking just before we started, and my most difficult class was drawing. Like, that was like a foundational class, and 
I struggled a lot mm -hmm. with it. It was hard for me because I didn't have any experience with it in the past. I, I was always intimidated by it. And um, it's true, you can learn how to draw. So just like Tony was saying, you can just come here and you can learn it. Um, so yeah, definitely. I think. And in our beginning classes, maybe half are non-majors. Mm -hmm. Some might choose to be majors oh. after that, or they might become uh, minors, but uh, if you were to look, walk through the class, look at the work that's being produced, you wouldn't know who the art majors hmm. are. And, right. I mean, if, you know, if there's, there are people that have the desire and put forth a lot of effort and really mm. amazing results, so. Yeah, it really is about the effort, you know? So I've, I've known uh, people to like, oh, I'll just take some art classes because that'll be, you know, easy, right? And it's like, no. <laughs> it isn't necessarily that it's super hard, but it can be very time consuming because, yeah. because yeah. you have to be doing it. You know, you like have to make those paintings and not just one painting, you have to make the paintings or you have to make the websites or you have to make the posters, right? You, you have to put the time in but if you do that, if you're, if you're willing to put the time in and you have the curiosity and you want to shape the cultural objects of the future or the visual objects of the future, uh, this is the place to come. Cool, that's really there's, inspiring. There's, yeah. there's not a back row in a studio art class. <laughs> no. There's not, that's there's not a back talent. row. People it's good, it's a good thing. Just circles. Just yeah. circles. In so many ways, there's, not yeah. a back, there's no place to hide. That's a good yeah. point. So and what size are the classes generally for the studio classes? Really nice ratio of professors, like faculty to students. Like it's never, I haven't been in a class that's had more than like 20, 25 people tops. And then I've right. been in other classes that have been like a really um, like close knit group, like eight to 12 people for huh. one professor and getting to work like in the same studio as that professor for hours on end, like several days a week. Hmm. Probably an average might be 14 to 18. Okay. 20 is kind of a maximum. That's great. Yeah. And the art history classes are a little bit larger. Right, because yeah. they're not as studio based. So, talk a little bit about the structure of classes. Are they um, a lecture in a lab? How are they generally set up or just studio based? They, they really are studio classes, but uh, we all have to deliver some kind of context, history, background, you know, to a new assignment. So there's a lecture component too, but it's not a formal lecture. Okay. Yeah, like in like a communication design class, um, we don't have the like lecture lab model. We just have a long three hour studio. So you would come to class in a lab or a you know, studio, like a, a com com computer lab okay. uh, or you know, one of the studio classrooms. And uh, the you know, time is set for about three hours and a student could expect to hear someone like me talk for, gee, hopefully not a full 20 minutes. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna give a, a kind of a short demo and you know, maybe I'll like talk about some key topic if there's like a technical thing that like needs to be discussed. Uh, you know, for instance, in the um, interactive design courses, we you know start the the like class by learning about HTML and and CSS, mm -hmm. uh, and so there are short you know hopefully short lectures uh, where I kind of talk about you know these are some of the tools, but then really the like goal of this studio education is to have time to make things, you know? So I keep talking about shaping these future graphic or cultural objects, and you can't do that if you don't have time to be making stuff. And mm -hmm. so that's, that's what I think the goal of the communication design courses are, is to make things, talk about things, make more things. So we go through this iterative process of making something and then talking about it, figuring out how it could be better and then remaking it and then remaking it and remaking it and remaking it until it's ready. And so related to that, how does um, the department deal with critiques? Is, is that a formal process? Is that a more casual? We have a, it's, it's uh, what I, I heard Tony say recently, it's our signature pedagogy is the critique. Okay. <laughs> right? Uh, from some book or something. From somewhere. I'm not that but, Which it today. is, but it, but it takes a lot of different forms. It might, it might start out as a written critique. So there's some questions. Okay. Students are supposed to look at the work that's been put up that emerged from an assignment uh, and respond to some questions and then talk about it. So that's, you know, maybe early on in, in lower division classes, there's more of that going on. But it's, we're tr kind of trying to train students to critique each other's work mm -hmm. and 
and eventually to evaluate and critique their own work, which is really, really hard to do. Uh, and then we also have um, more formal portfolio reviews, uh, more or less at the end of a sophomore year, where students bring in a range of work and three faculty meet with each student one-on-one. -on -one. Wow. And it's, not, it's really intended to be uh, helpful, you know, not to be painful or anything, <laughs> but really to be helpful and also uh, as a way for us to get to know our students better so that we can advise them, oh, mm -hmm. we didn't know you were doing this. You might <laughs> like to take this other course and so okay. on. So. In uh, communication design, I, I, I tend to have two main goals with the concept of like a, a crit critique. Uh, you know, students need to kind of develop taste and be able to critically evaluate graphic work. So they're talking about their work and then the like work of other students. Uh, I like to do it in small groups. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, we have the thing where one or two students are like talking and then the other 15 of us are just standing there kind of mm -hmm. waiting for something <laughs> to happen, right? But um, so I like the kind of a small group crit crit critique for like a uh, when we're still working on the on the you know uh, things, but then I also like uh, and I just started doing this recently the outcomes crit critique, which is where we actually practice uh, the idea of reflective practice, where while we are working on things, we learn by thinking about how we worked on those things, mm -hmm. and and so we need to have a you know moment where we look back on the project and and we kind of ask ourselves. Not is this a good poster or a good website, but when I was working on that, did the things that I tried work? Hmm. And did some of the things that I tried not work? And so what, like, what would I do a second time? What would I not do a second time? And so you know, we like, want to both be talking about work and thinking critically on the topic of you know, visual, vis visual language, but at the same time, we also want to be thinking about like, how did I get here? How could I get here faster or more efficiently, or how could I have a better outcome as uh, well? And so that's that reflective practice, and that has cool. a history going back thirty or forty years, and then even farther, you know, beyond. So, so we want our students to sort of focus on their process, mm -hmm. which is what you're talking about, reflecting on their process. And sometimes, you know, we're uh, we're in an academic setting. You're college students. Here's an assignment. It's due on Monday. And so it can be really hard to you know, give much thought about what's your process, what, what works for me, what kind of research do I need to do. So all of that, of what Tony's talking about, is intended to sort of you know, look back and as a way to sort of arm yourself and understand your process as you go ahead with whatever you know, is a new project or assignment. So. It doesn't just happen. Right. You know? You have to yeah. practice. Yeah, yeah you have it to takes practice. practice. Yeah. 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 You know, one other thing, too, that I see a lot of students, especially at the early levels, is everyone has to learn that, like, if we talk about your piece and it needs some, you know, work, we aren't talking about you as a person, right? So, Absolutely. like, if this piece need work, needs work, it doesn't mean that you need work. But a lot of people you have a hard time separating. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you need to work, right? But yeah, so like people have a hard time separating that at the mm -hmm. very beginning. But it's it's something that I think the students get into pretty quickly. Have you had that yeah. experience? Yeah, I always appreciate. Yeah, uh, like the the various uh, formats of critiques that I've had, mm -hmm. and how each one lends itself to like people who uh, are better at talking about work or critiquing work in different ways. Um, like we've had written critiques, like Susan was saying, or we've had the outcomes critique where we put together a brief presentation with a small group about um, what we would do differently mm -hmm. with a similar project in the future. Um, one of the most intense critiques that like really forced everybody in the class to separate themselves from the work was um, <laughs> in my, my sophomore year, uh, we had a class where we did a magazine spread layout. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, we laid them end to end on a table and were told to, um, and it was just the, the students, so the professors stepped back for this and then we had to rank them from the um, most well-developed to the least well-developed concept. Like as a group, as, like a, as a classroom, you had to uh -huh. oh, So wow. we, there was a lot of like discussion about the work and people talking about each other's work, um, like in a very honest way because mm -hmm 
we wanted the lineup to reflect like real merit and time spent and good concept. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like that, that was a good experience, especially early on, to sort of break the ice when it comes to being honest about yeah, their it's work. Hard. Yeah, because it's, it's, it is difficult to criticize someone's work if um, you're worried that they might take it personally. Mm -hmm. For sure. So you guys really um, put an effort into really separating that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Do you have anything to add to that? Or oh, I just remember logo? being in the, in the <laughs> we were in the same class, so we experienced that together. Yep. And uh, yeah, that, it, it, was, it, was, it was intense and a, a huge learning experience. And um, I, think, I think, you know, as a human, you, that's just something that you work on. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's a life skill. To, yeah, totally. To it, was, cool. it was a really, really powerful day, I suppose, <laughs> experience, yeah. Sure. It's, it is hard to evaluate your own work, and when, when you've done something, whether it's a drawing or a design, it takes on an authority. Mm -hmm. It does. And it's, and it's hard to... It becomes a part of you, too. Well, that, that's true. It takes on an authority, and it's hard to step back from it and see it in a fresh way. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've had sometimes had students sort of play musical chairs, so they're working on a drawing. Well, now you have to get up, step over here, sit down in front of another drawing, and see if you can make that any better, see if you can correct that. So that's, a cool that's you know, you're never supposed to touch someone else's work, right? But <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. I've done similar things. Uh, there's a technique called the ricochet, uh, ricochet crit critique where um, I collect all of the work and then randomly give each student a you know, new piece and tell them to present it uh -huh. as though it's their own piece mm -hmm. and you know, um, explain what their thought process was as though hey they had made this. <laughs> they didn't. <laughs> and, and the like reason that I do that is um, uh, just to mess with students right now. <laughs> That's no, true. So, torture. But it's torture. To, uh, yeah. So what it does is it is it gives you that separation. So mm -hmm. so it's like this isn't actually my work. So the feedback that I'm like getting isn't about me as a person, you know? Yeah. So it's easy to then se separate yourself. If the person is self-conscious who like actually made it, they're kind of sit sitting off in the crowd and they don't have to say anything. And then the other thing too is that they then have to think critically about graphic uh, objects and, you know, talk about like, you know, based on this thing in my hand, how, how do I think this got made, you hmm. know? And so I think those are, those are a fun thing to do kind of in, in the like early, Mm -hmm. Early courses, mm -hmm. and also to sort of be in somebody else's shoes. To, yeah, yeah, sure. That's you a really can, uh, cool develop idea. some, you know, um, empathy, empathy, which is yeah. an important characteristic of a uh, designer, and uh, you know, critical thinking. How are how are things manufactured? You know, being able to think about like how was this constructed? Those are all really important char characteristics to develop over the four years that you're here. So once again, you don't have to already know how to do this stuff. We mm -hmm. will help you do that. Uh, and so ev everything, you know, I always try to tell students, I'm like, you should work on this over the next couple of years. You should try to get, <laughs> try to draw straight lines over the next couple of years or try to do this over the next couple, couple of years, you know? Cool. <laughs> Looks like we might have a question from the Facebook. Uh, actually, a couple of comments. James Hillier says his son cycles for Fort Lewis and loves the school. He's a Hokie and he loves visiting the fort. And Billy Grimes says, George. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Uh, but also a question about the gallery. Maybe you could talk about how the yeah, gallery definitely. It's factors into the, the yeah. academic and whatever side of the department you Yeah, fits let's into. talk about where we are right now and the, the beautiful facility you guys have here. So yeah, we, guys talk about we do have a great gallery space and, and it's, we think of it as another classroom. Mm -hmm. And so we try to have uh, exhibitions which are really uh, you know, national in character. I mean, we have really big time artists and designers here. And it's another way to teach. It's really important for our students to see what's going on in the art world. So. Cool, and can anybody talk about this exhibit that's in here right now? I think the viewers can see a little bit of the ones behind yeah. us. I think this is awesome. So in here right now is work posters by Dirk Fowler, um, and he was actually a professor of uh, Paul Booth. Oh, so, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, Paul, I know he was the department chair for, for a while. Is He's he chair right now. Paul Booth? Right now? Yeah. 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 
Um, he's our leader. Yeah, so he's, he's actually <laughs> at the helm of the senior seminar class right now. And so this is his teacher's work. There's a lot of emphasis on force connections and like these really clever sort of visual combinations. Um, if you're in town, you should come up and check <laughs> it out from nine until four every <laughs> weekday. Um, yeah, and one of the really cool things about this gallery in particular is that we as students get to take the gallery management course, which means that under, the, under uh, faculty supervision, usually by Andrew Martin, we install this work. So as students, you get to work like closely with um, the visiting artist or the designer, uh, like handling their work, seeing it up close. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what else to say, but he, he hand uh, prints all of these posters on a, uh, a press that he has in his studio. Cool. And, um, and every student, correct me if I'm wrong, but every student is part of a gallery exhibition at some point during their career? <laughs> Not necessarily, yeah, but they, okay. but everyone has the opportunity. Has the opportunity so, too. in addition to, well, I guess with the with the senior the show, senior they are show. right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So what you said is true. Okay. And then there's other opportunities. There's a juried student exhibition. Right. So uh, you might get in, you might not, but it's a great experience, and we we recommend seeking rejection in a certain way. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to enter things and, and collect rejections. <laughs> uh, and then there's also a student gallery in another part of the building, and any student or group of students can propose an exhibition there That's and put cool. their work up there. Yeah. And how often do the exhibits rotate through? Well, we have this six or funny. seven a year, okay. an academic year. Is that about right? It feels like almost once a month in the main gallery. Yeah. And okay. then the exit gallery down the hall depends on uh, when people book it out. So sometimes classes will be showing in there if okay. nobody else has reserved the space. Or uh, Gretchen and I are part of the design club on campus and we have reserved it for a uh, student show so that okay. it's like another opportunity for art and design students and just like students across all the campus to awesome. have work shown. Cool. And just um, sort of elaborating more in this building, can you guys talk about the studio spaces, just maybe the student perspective of what you what you appreciate about this facility. Um, I mean, it's a, just a really enjoyable place to spend your time, mm -hmm. like, uh, and it's definitely nicer than I think most studios I can afford after. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, is the big the big time right here. Right. Mm -hmm. um, like, there's the ceramic studio that's fantastic. I got to spend a semester in there throwing on the wheel and doing coil building and all that stuff. Like, you, you have, like, first-hand access to everything. Your f faculty will teach you how to, like, go through the process and use all the tools at your disposal so that you can come back um, on your own time and spend, like, as long as you like. Like, I've definitely spent, like, full days in the sculpture <laughs> studio. Yeah, it's very easy to, to enjoy time here. Cool. It's, it's open. You know, some art buildings are locked. Ours is open, and All students have, well, Close students are supposed to clear out at 10.30, <laughs> right? 10 yeah, yeah. Uh, but otherwise, you know, seven days a week, students are, have access to any uh -huh. classroom that's not in use for some other purpose, and so that can be their studio. That's yeah. right. What a cool resource. Yeah. And I think a lot of the studio rooms sort of end up being meeting places for students. Okay. And, and uh, so there's like a lot of camaraderie that sort of happens in those, in those places where you can kind of come together and um, bounce ideas off each other, help each other with their work. You know, I mean, a lot of that happens. And so mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a, you know, a lot of the studio spaces are big, they're shared. Um, there's generally enough room for everybody, and, and it is sort of like that. Uh, I like the community aspect of it, where everybody everybody's got a place in it. Awesome. Yeah. And what about any of the technology that's available in this building? I know we've got some Mac labs, some 3D printers, I believe. Anything that mm -hmm. people especially that? like? Sure. So you know, in the interest of shaping future things you know we need to use whatever the uh, appropriate technology of the time is you know design has always been a technological field 600 years ago the printing press was Gutenberg. you know earth shattering right and then you know so design is is always leveraging the technology of the day i was telling some students the other day that the first 
the first three reasons that we used um, office com 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 computers, one of them was for page layout software. So, you know, mm -hmm. this has always been a technological field, but we have the, um, the um, appropriate Mac labs. There are uh, faculty who are um, exploring the intersection between art, design, and you know rapid prototyping. So there are three D printers. We're we are talking about laser cutting uh, as you know just just another way of being able to quickly take ideas out of our heads and make them real, so that we can then talk about them and then remake them and you know. Uh, so yeah, we you know whatever is you know needed to um, to realize your artistic or design vision, we are we 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 you know have those things. So. Cool. When you when when you say technology, you think about the most current technology. But you could one could take a, a sculpture class where you pour pewter mm -hmm. to make a sculpture, oh, yeah. well, so it's very it's traditional, yeah, or use a three D printer to exactly. make. A, a sculpture. So there's this whole range of things. Uh, and I teach uh, a craft class where sometimes we work with natural dyes. Well, that is, that's a technology. It's been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. So yeah. there's a whole range of technologies yeah. that are, you know, they're tools to express and communicate. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think that we try not to be like fri frivolous or, you know, think like, oh, this is the new thing. Let's like get this. Instead, just like we typically are in uh, art and you know uh, design, we're concerned with context and what is um, appropriate. And so, you know, if you want to make something, what are the right tools that you need to be using? You know, and sometimes the like right tool is a brand new three D printer, and sometimes the right tool is uh, you know uh, like a printing press. Mm -hmm. And and so we're I think concerned with what is. Um, what is appropriate rather than what is new. Yeah. Right, so what, what, what do you need? What does the idea drive you mm -hmm. to exactly. do? What's mm -hmm. required? Yep. Yeah. Cool. Another question from online? Yes, uh, Rodrigo says, I want to get into, design, into the design world to create logos, maybe get into a magazine firm. My question is, do you have to be a super duper good artist? And he adds that he, he can't draw to save his life. <laughs> well, as, as we were talking about, we, we have classes for that. Those are learnable things. If you've never picked up a pen, uh, we can teach you how to do that. That's what, that's what we do over here is we show you how to shape those future logos, future posters, future websites. Mm -hmm. and, and if you need to like draw in order to shape those things, then we'll show you how to draw. If you need to use a 3D printer to shape those things, then we'll show you how to use one of those. But uh, you don't need any, like I said, cur so you would need cur curiosity and, and uh, drive to put the time in. And, mm -hmm. But yeah, we can show you how to do that. And I also think too that, you know, as, as far as what Rodrigo was talking about in particular, I mean, a lot of that is problem solving. Mm -hmm. And, you know, mm -hmm. there are a number of ways to solve a different problem. And that's one of the things that I love learning about in this, you know, in this uh, major. Um, drawing is, a, is one, one arrow in the quiver of tools that you need to, mm -hmm. to do that kind of work. So I would, not hesitate, Rodrigo, to get yourself into, into this program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes in popular culture, there's this big idea about what good drawing is, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. So it looks so real. And, uh, you know, maybe that's good drawing, but we, we often uh, use drawing as a way to think. Mm. Uh, and, and that's a different idea, but mm -hmm. a way to think and a way to solve problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's an excellent point. Uh, in our in, 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 interactive uh, d design class, we were making paper websites, you know, and, and you know, we don't spend months doing that, but uh, usability pro professionals, web pro pro professionals will often start pen and paper and, you know, sketch up what, what should this website look like, and then they will then go on to digital prototypes and they, like, may then build something, you know, but 
uh, yeah, I mean, there are, there are lots of these different tools. How do we take our I, I, ideas out of our head, put them down into the world, make them tangible so that we can talk about them and improve them uh, quickly? Yeah, and my drawings aren't all that pretty. <laughs> but I have good ideas. Yeah. And they don't have to always be they don't analog. Have to always be drawing. <laughs> like, drawing is often what first comes to mind when it comes to creative expression, but there's a myriad of other ways mm -hmm. to yeah. convey a visual mm -hmm. idea. Absolutely. Like, mm -hmm. like the 3D printers or like uh, stitching, like working with textiles, mm -hmm. um, working in sculpture, like drawing is often like the origin point or like what we view as is like a super classical idea of creativity, but there's a lot more and mm -hmm. it's all in this building. So if you can't do one now, you can start with the other stuff and then you'll get there. So don't give up, Rodrigo. We're counting on you. <laughs> okay, we got another question? Uh, from Matthew, he's asking about industrial design. Are there any plans to add any industrial design elements into the curriculum or what can we offer for someone interested in industrial design? My uh, undergraduate degree is in, in, in industrial design and we, we don't have any plans to offer a, a, a ID uh, program. We don't. Yeah, and so um, unfortunately, uh, yeah, I don't think that that's the case. One thing though, uh, the like reason that I'm no longer in that field is that what I noticed was that, uh, you know, the like really interesting design work is happening on the screen on the project or on the like product. So I would encourage you to consider instead of, um, of um, industrial design, where you're you know, mainly concerned with the shape of the object, uh, consider how we interact with it. And that is something that we are doing. And so we, uh, I, I teach people how we shape graphic objects and many of those graphic objects are digital objects. And so you know, shaping what's, what's it gonna be like to interact with a, a you know, digital thing. And so uh, I think that many people who were at one point interested in industrial design have now realized that the you know real action is uh, shaping those digital um, interfaces and things like that, and that is something that we are talking about here. We are doing that. We have those courses. We have that expertise, uh, and so come come shape the future digital objects with us. Yeah. And what I would add to that too is if you're dead set on having some traditional industrial design in your portfolio, um, a lot of the studio courses here are open-ended in the guidelines enough that if you wanted to um, turn a sculpture assignment into an opportunity to explore mm -hmm. design and think about how the object relates functionally as well as aesthetically, um, there's plenty of room to do that. And once you get uh, into the upper division courses, there's a lot of um, independent studies that you can apply for uh, and specialized sculpture and art courses that free you up to, mm -hmm. to explore what your interests are. Cool. So you can kind of sculpt it into what you want it to be and the skills that you want to Absolutely. Learn. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Um, you guys mentioned that you guys are both in a student design club. Mm -hmm. Could you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah. So I am the chapter president of the Fort Lewis College AIGA branch. Um, we're like a, a small club that runs a lot of s events around campus. We're getting, we get asked a lot for student volunteers to help with other club projects. Hmm. Um, so like, uh, I just finished a poster for Club Del Centro. They're putting on a, a, an event called Vaz um, or Voice. Oh, and okay. that's for, um, uh, sexual assault awareness. Okay. Uh, we've also had students help with the Boys and Girls Club or with the Independent, or I'm trying to think of um, a couple others. Uh, we have people all over campus. Gretchen uh, is doing the poster right now for the Exit Gallery show that we're going to have up. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, uh, do you want to talk about the club as well? Um, well, I'm not as involved as George is because he's the president <laughs> and he has been for what, three years? Uh, two years. Two yeah. years, yeah. So um, I think some of the other things that we do, um, it, you know, it's, it's a club for, you know, design students. So sometimes, I think every semester 
we'll have like a, a meeting that you know we go into the Mac lab and then we just like share all of our t tips and tricks um, that we know on the computer like in the Adobe suite wow. kind of help That's each cool. other out and uh, you know to increase productivity streamline you know your work make you faster at stuff learn mm -hmm. new fun things um, because learning the Adobe suite is endless um, <laughs> so and you know there are people that are just better at Photoshop some people are better at Illustrator and so mm -hmm. we like to like share the wealth um, we do fund, you know, like fundraising, you know, we sell posters and, you know, if you're a design student or um, even a studio art student, you know, you can design a poster and uh, sell it and that's part of our fundraising. And then I think we take field trips too and um, sometimes we'll go to local artist studios and talk to local artists that, and see how they live and see what being a real working artist looks like. Um, We've had and, designers from downtown come up to do talks as well. Right, and yeah. Conversations, like round table mm -hmm. discussion. Exactly, yeah. And uh, yeah, and then we have like, you know, long distance field trips as well, yeah. where we'll go and, and tour a city, um, visit design studios, visit museums, things like that. Mm -hmm. So um, that's pretty exciting, yeah. So Gretchen and George both spoke to or alluded to something that I think is really, really important about our program, which is, you know, we're in this dedicated building. We all spend a lot of time in here. <laughs> and there really is a community that develops. And I'm always so impressed with how our students are so supportive of each other, generous to each other. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just think, I don't know if all young people today are like that, but I think our students are really wonderful in that way. So We were just talking welcoming. about that last night, too, in class. We were just having a side conversation, and, and someone said, I just, I just love having, when I come into the art department, I feel like I just have a warm hug that wraps around <laughs> me. It's like comfort, comfortable. <laughs> I feel like you're at home when you're in the department. That's awesome. Because yeah. I know some art programs are really competitive, and that's not... I was briefly an art major, and it was so competitive that I just kind of didn't work out for me. Which kind of segues into my next question. How do you guys feel that the art program here differs from those at other colleges? Well, that's actually... I guess that is a good... So one of the things that I noticed like right away when I got here, compared to where I was teaching previously, um, yeah, there, there is a studio culture here. People are, are like in the building all the time making mm -hmm. stuff. And uh, you know, the like, place I was before, you know, it was a nice school, but uh, I think people just kind of went home and like worked on their stuff there. And it just didn't have that same, that same community feel that like we have here. And, and that was something that I, you know, only, this is only my, my second semester here, but um, I like picked up on that really quickly. Like now, when I like get here in the morning, I like go wander around the building for five minutes because I know that there's going to be some like people around that I can go say hi to. And mm -hmm. and you know, uh, not every school is uh, like that. Some some schools, you know, just end up with a culture where people kind of go work at home, or maybe there's like a student center or a student union that that they'd rather be sitting in, but. I think that there is something special about the the uh, facilities here and the like kind of you know culture of like people are in the building there are probably people who are not in class right now working in almost every room in the building mm. at the moment mm -hmm. so and I think that's really cool yeah yeah it is it's a pretty inviting place and you know there's often a lot of laughter in the yeah. hallway and um, students have um, a, a a lot of contact with faculty members. We all, we know our students. Uh, that's really important. And uh, so, you know, I'm not suggesting we're one big happy family, but it's a pretty uh, cohesive, uh, comfortable place. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we try to be really welcoming to new students. I actually, just as a small anecdote, I, I have a freshman in a drawing class who introduced me to three uh, older students and uh, her friends. And then as we walked back into the classroom, she said, those are my moms. So those are my moms. <laughs> so she, she really felt like she had these older students oh, who are her friends and looking after her. Yeah. So. Cool. Cool. 
Um, oh, another opportunity I know that you guys have in this department is study abroad. Does anybody want to talk about that? I know Paul Booth, who isn't here with us today, often runs a study abroad through the summer. Does anybody know more have detail you been? on that? Yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah, we went last year. Uh, last not two years ago. Yeah, the, the trip to Italy that cool. we went on was, yeah, an incredible time. Uh, especially the trip that Paul plans over the summer semester. There's some uh, academics in the week leading up to it, and then a, a cumulative like journal project reflecting on the experience at the end. Um, but while you're there, it's like a, a whirlwind and you're like nonstop visiting like incredible museums and walking through these amazing historic art cities and destinations. Cool. Um, and if you're in a student group, you get to like cut every line, which is great. <laughs> <Really>? oh, <cool. laughs> That's the best part. So we like we walked around like three blocks of people waiting to get into the Vatican mm -hmm. in Rome, um, and we just like walked saunter right on it. <laughs> Got to see the, awesome. the whole gallery there and the, the basilica it was incredible. Cool. Yeah, I saw some pictures from the trip last year, which I think was Spain, and I know he's planning Greece this year, so. Lots of cool opportunities there. Well, in 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 in, in, in addition to our uh, art our art history uh, pr professor is also doing stu stu study abroad. Yeah, study I work. wish I could tell you more about yeah. that. She's oh. going to be in Spain this summer. Oh, that's yeah. I didn't hear yeah. about that. Yeah. Uh, so Corey Pillen, and we'll have to get you informed about. That. Yeah, we'll yeah. find out more information about yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So there's like a lot of opportunities. Yeah. Just the one right. person right. that there's there's okay. like multiple people doing so cool. this. Stuff. Awesome. All right, so I'd love to get some more um, info from you guys as students about what your experience has been like. So could you guys tell me about maybe your favorite classes you've taken? Mm. It can be for any reason whatsoever. Hmm. Mine are pretty diverse. Great. I got to say, <laughs> um, I, I loved screen printing. Hmm. Like that was a real fun one for me. Um, the you know, I think I grew up in a print shop, you know, my dad oh, was cool. a printer. So there was just sort of like this, I don't know, like nostalgic element to it. But I also just really enjoyed the, the hands-on um, process of screen mm -hmm. printing. Um, and I've all, yeah, so the screen printing class was one that, that I, I totally loved. And, you know, and then, you know, kind of flip-flop to that, so that's the analog, and then the digital, like the, you know, the interactive design, I gotta say, <laughs> was super fun, and for reasons that I didn't think would be exciting to me. Like, learning HTML was, like, really liberating. <laughs> it, Wait, it was, you gotta talk more about that. <laughs> it, was, it was exciting because, you know, and I was talking to my friend the, the other day, she's, we're now in, like, the, the second interactive design class, and we both were just like talking about how it's so neat how you can just type a few words down and then you push a you know you click enter and then on the screen you have like this beautiful visual display <laughs> and and it's just so satisfying <laughs> um, and I think it's like instant instant gratification mm -hmm. but also um, you know you learn so quickly because you have to figure out your own mistakes. Yeah. And, um, and it's, it, it's just super satisfying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. I'm so, glad that you liked that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, it, it was hard to learn. I'm not going to, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong. It was hard at first, but, um, but in the end, it was, it was just like so satisfying to build my own website mm -hmm. and have it do things. <laughs> and, uh, and it looked cool. <laughs> Awesome. I thought it looked cool. <laughs> yeah, it is hard to to learn some of that stuff. You know, it's like another language, right? We're yeah. like mm -hmm. learning to, you know, give instructions directly to a computer system. But um, at the same time, you know, hopefully uh, students feel su supported. We, uh, you know, read about these topics. We try them out in class. We um, use this online system to actually get instant feedback. You know, so really, when I like structure classes like that. I understand that it is that is a it's a difficult thing to learn how to do, uh, especially because many design students may not have felt like they were very good at math. Like I have students who who like said that people told them that maybe they should be this because they aren't good at math or coding, and it's like that's baloney. Yeah. Like we can teach you how to do this. 
we're going to make sure that you're reading about it, hearing about it, seeing it, trying it out, you know. And um, just like the drawing, like you can learn how to do this. Mm -hmm. I've, I've shown, I think in the last seven years, I've, I've taught 400 people how to build web pages. Mm -hmm. And every one of them, you know, we, we can do this. this. And most of them had, had never looked at a code ed ed editor. They like didn't even know that, that like you can see the, you know, source code of like mm -hmm. a web page. But yeah, you can you can learn how to do this regardless of your background or if like people were telling you that you you might not be good at this. Like that's mm -hmm. that just isn't true. You can learn how to do this. Awesome. Yeah. I would totally. say that's one of the reasons why um, interactive design was like up there in my top classes, like my favorite classes I've taken. Because not only did you learn how to do it, but you also learn how to take that forward. Like I'm not in a web design class right now, but over the last several weeks I've been dedicating time to like building my own portfolio site from scratch. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it, I'm doing it now because I learned through interact, like intro to uh, interactive design that the tools are out there to like take that knowledge further and get the ball mm -hmm. rolling. Um, like anything that you want to do on the web you can learn how to do it, is what I've been learning over the last couple cool. of weeks. Cool. And I mean, what, what good skills to have at this Well, and then with, you know, George, too, I mean, I think part of it is his cur curiosity. And so, you know, George has, has, like, been sending me these, like, cool, like, things that he finds <laughs> and stuff. And it, like, shows that he's, like, going to get this because he's, like, out there searching for little demos and tutorials. And he's, like, sending me these, like, cool one of them was like really weird and cool and it was, it was really awesome and so I think that's you know earlier we were talking about just have the curiosity and the willingness to put the work in and you know if someone's told you that you're not creative or, or, or that you're not going to be able to code that's all baloney we can show you those things if you have the curiosity and the drive and we we can take it from there awesome cool and um, as students what was something that maybe was different than you expected as being in what you were expecting from an art degree and a, and a program in your classes? What, what was unexpected for you? Um, I didn't expect to get into sculpture like I, like mm. I did. Okay. Um, it's been a double-edged sword because I'm a college student, so I don't have like a ton of space to keep all the sculptures <laughs> that I've made. That's the problem with sculpture. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was something like coming into Fort Lewis, I had only ever worked in like 2D media. Mm -hmm. I had never like made something physical with my own hands. Um, but because of the foundations courses, like we start with um, the 3D design course. You can be doing that as early as freshman year or uh, sophomore year is when mm -hmm. I took it. And you sort of get a feel for all these different materials that you get to work with. And then the year after that, I got to take a topics course, like specifics on um, found object sculpture okay. with Amy Wenland, who's a uh, faculty here, and mm -hmm. sh she showed us, like, she found a ton of amazing materials. There was a guy with a barn who donated a bunch of stuff halfway through. Huh. Um, and yeah, just like the, the satisfaction and variety of results you can get from, like, I don't know, you, it, again, it's like a curiosity thing. You, yeah. you quickly learn that with the tools at your disposal, like, you can do pretty much anything that you're interested in doing. Right.